irreformable as the Ottoman Empire was in Eastern Europe over a century ago. And in contrast, the Nigerian Federation, in the form it was constituted by the British, cannot, by any stretch of imagination, be considered an African necessity. Yet, we are being forced to sacrifice our very existence as a people to the integrity of that ramshackle creation that has no justification either in history or in the freely expressed wishes of the people. That was Cornell Chukwemeka Ojuku in June 1, 1969, during the Civil War. Welcome back to Sahara TV. This is the roundtable. This is where we bring in experts to help us understand the hot topic of today, which is the question, is Nigeria falling apart? We have as our guest today, Ms. Hanatu Musawa and Ogaga Ifowodo. Ms. Musawa is Sahara Reporter's newest columnist. She is a lawyer by training and currently she's pursuing her PhD at the University of London. And Professor Ifowodo teaches poetry at the Texas State University. Uh, Professor Ifowodo, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, Hanatu, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Let me start. We just had a, a discussion with Charles Wewa and Ben Ikari, who are Ogoni activists, and they talked about the Declaration of Autonomy. Uh, I want to start with you, Professor Ifowodo. Tell me, uh, what does that mean for Nigeria? in the context of all the crisis going on, we have a section of the country declaring autonomy. What it means is that we can no longer bury our head in the sand like the ostrich and pretend that all is well with Nigeria and the parts are going to force the issue of reconstituting Nigeria according to our dreams. So these actions of self-determination to assert integrity for the part, which is to uh, the coming to be of a modern nation state is an important step. I, th I welcome it. I think it's a positive, and I encourage the rest of the country to do as well. Uh, uh, let me go to you, uh, uh, Hanatu. Uh, do you, you write about positive things, and do you see anything positive in, in this Declaration of Autonomy? Well, in, yes, I do write some uh, See my articles tend, or my writings do, positive because I, I really do in the Nigerian project. Um, yes, uh, of course, I think the um, self declaration that both Tony and the Bukhasi people have declared recently, I think we all, like I had stated before, we all have to look at it within the ambit of international law principle. But before that, you know, uh, um, issue has to be addressed. I think it uh, Mr. O briefly touched on it before, is the fact that the centre is falling. And um, like um, uh, I mentioned before, you know, because, you know, the long and short of it is that Nigeria is a failed state. And uh, it can be described by every single as a failed state. And what we have playing out, the result of the elements that would define any country or state is this sort of expression of anger we see from the people from every single part of the country. And, you know, this um, anger is caused because of injustice and their system. And uh, the massive corruption that has been going on in government decades now, not government, has made it absolutely impossible for administration to find any, even the necessity that any citizen need. And, you know, at this stage, because of the elements, people to be really, really angry. And, you know, this anger, like rage, is coming at where you have, you know, um, third forces, extremists, and other kind of forces, you know, posing a threat. And, uh, and then you have people always given advice and rhetoric. And these kind of um, elements, come together, you know, it's, it's, it's understandable that people would to look for a way out, you know, that's, that's the, that's the reality. 
Now let me, uh, Ogaga, let me ask you, before you became uh, a writer, you were, you were an attorney. And in the Bill, Bill of Rights that the Ogoni people declared and in their declaration of autonomy, they were talking about the United Nations uh, Human Rights Declaration that um, the way Nigeria is structured is in violation of their rights as, as, um, uh, as indigenous people. Can you help us understand what that means? Well, <laughs> I, honestly, we don't even need to go that far. I, I, I think this is a, uh, a platform that has been used ever since the coming to be of Mosop. They try to use the indigenous people's uh, declaration of the rights of indigenous people uh, uh, as a, a way of internationalizing what is really a domestic problem. This is a problem of Nigeria, but because they had no room within the Nigerian state to give expression to it due to the clampdown on all agitations for fiscal federalism, a just and equitable Nigeria, uh, the environmental issues that they faced being in the Niger Delta, which is not only the Ogoni people, by the way, all the people in the Niger Delta suffer from these things. They use the United Nations platform as a way of internationalizing what is really a domestic problem. So we don't need to go that far. Now that the matter is back, it's going to be back to us in the end anyway. We're going to resolve this problem within Nigeria before the international community can recognize any state, any arrangement that we come up with. Which brings me back to the point that Ms. Mustafa is talking about, the question of the international framework for recognizing uh, nations. The truth is that is going to come after recognition, international recognition, whether by other nations or by the UN, will come after. The first step is for us to decide on whether we're going to be one, one nation and then draw up the articles of association that will guarantee peaceful coexistence where all the rights of the constituent parts are respected. Then the international society will not need to be called in because we will still be operating within the framework of Nigeria. However, if Nigeria has to break up, whether into two or into three or into as many parts, International society, community, and the UN will recognize those parts as they finally break up, like in the former Yugoslavia or in, in, in the most recent case in Sudan, as they are finally constituted into nations and accepted by the people in those geographical enclaves, then we can talk about international recognition after. But for now, this is a step in assertion of the right to self determination up and including up to and including the right to succession so that is where we are at the moment and i think we can leave the question of international recognition for later let me ask you uh, hanato you said that nigeria is a failed state and i agree and, and i believe that it works very well for those that failed it now how do we yeah. uh, how do we now make a change when the failed state works for the same people that failed it uh, do you think that this step by the Ogoni people demanding for autonomy is the right way uh, and and what will happen if all the ethnic communities in Nigeria decide to go that path what will be the the end result probably no um just before I, if I could please if you don't mind address you know the point Mr. Ogaga had made on the issue of the international as okay. aspect okay. of the right to self-determination been made. I think that it would be pretentious for us to um, exclude international support in this regard. Ogoni people are essentially on end resolution to sustain. Now, the international law principle of determination has actually evolved over time. The framework of respect for the international integrity of existing state. The right to self-determination gives rise right to succession actually unfairly defined conditions. A state generally whose government represents the whole of which we presume Nigeria does, residents within its territory is entitled to its territorial integrity under that international law. And if you look at practically all the documents that with this issue of right determination, it has the principle of integrity first foremost. And uh, many of the um, instruments that deal with this, um, they normally capitalize on the issue of um, colonization. And it, it would be very difficult for the resolution which the Ogoni and the Bakuni 
see people um, expressed that they would rely on for the uh, and the Bacardi people to be able to the threshold of a colonial people or an oppressed people. You know, uh, I don't think either it can be said that, uh, you know, Goni people and people have been denied the mean of the government or to pursue their political, economic, cultural, and development. I think it would be very, it wouldn't be realistic for us to, even though essentially, of course, it is up to us to decide at some point want to continue nation or, um, no matter, you know, a different um, entity or do you, I don't know parts people divide the country up into, but I, we, you know, the any who is trying to a right to self determination and use the United Nations to do so cannot divorce themselves from the certain, you know, the issue and the and prevalence that international gives to and priorities to, to territorial integrity. Oh, Gaga, did you did you understand? Do you have anything to add? To well, I, I I simply have some audio problems, you know. Uh, so uh, my voice kept breaking. But if I, but I think I understand in general what she's saying. My view, my honest view at this moment is this: the question of the international um, international recognition to me it's it's far fetched for now. Um, I'm not saying it's not relevant. I'm not saying Ms. Mustafa is not uh, on point. I'm just saying for now at this stage at this moment. It is far-fetched. Uh, I also think that the Ogoni people are actually breaking away and saying we want to form a nation of our own. They are far too small to form a nation of their own. I think they're just making a political statement. They are, they are trying to force an issue with the federal government. Uh, the so-called leadership is dodging, is refusing to confront head-on. They are trying to force an issue that so-called, is everything all right? Continue, continue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they are trying to force an issue that the rest of Nigeria, the so-called leaders, are refusing to discuss. Meanwhile, it is so imperative that we cannot continue. Things cannot continue to go on as they are. So that, to me, is a statement, and I think it, is, it doesn't even start with Ogoni. Again, if we are casting our mind back to only the, our most recent history, by which I mean since 1999, since the military for the second time, second time round, was forced back to the barracks, starting with the government of Obasanjo and then down to Yaradua and now to Jonathan. I think the question of forcing a, a, because a, a, of a unilateral declaration of independence started with the action of the 12 northern states that insisted on Sharia against the clear secular status of Nigeria in the constitution. So Again, to me, that wasn't the 12 northern states saying we are no longer part of Nigeria. They were simply making, forcing to the forefront, to the front burner, an issue that is so urgent, that is so imperative, we cannot dodge it anymore. What is the basis of Nigeria's unity, nation, nationhood? I think this is what all of this amounts to. So if we mention the Niger Delta uh, militants or the Odua People's Congress or, uh, or the movement for the... Uh, survival of uh, of mass of movement for Biafra, all of this down to the current Boko Haram, you know, a jihad, all of that amounts to the same thing: renegotiating Nigeria, forcing the issue because our leaders, those who profit from it most, who profit from this failed state that is called Nigeria, will not let it happen. I think that's what it, it really is. So we can leave the question of international recognition, the framework for recognition, the framework for relating to the, re relating to the rest of the world for later. But now, let's force the issue and talk about how we're going to make a nation out of these disparate entities that have been coupled together and have been preserved in that state since the departure of the British colonialists. Now, uh, Hanatu, let me ask you. So, based on what Ogaga was saying, uh, I'm, I'm envisioning that he's thinking about national conference. What is your view about yeah. national conference? Do you think it could lead to a solution to some of these problems that we have? Yes, I, I, I um, do. I for, but um, you know, with um, thought into it, I did. I, I now do. Um, yes, uh, and again, I to make a very, very quick on the issue of international aspect. If we're not going to involve the international, uh, you know, legal principles, 
themselves in the issue of whether it's self-determination or, you know, make decision as to how for the nation. You cannot, as a people, say on UN resolution. So, in which case, you have to look inward. And this, uh, you know, um, is of um, um, national influence or uh, constituency, a sense of institutional connection comes into it. If it's the way that we want all these issues, then let it, then this be the way that we have. But if we, the people, bring in the issue of United Nations resolution, to adhere to the principles and the set that have been laid down in that respect. I think that at this point in time, really, that it is time for us as a nation to and and talk. I don't know whether, uh, but last week, um, an statesman, al Hajj, I don't know whether the reporters um, um, posted an article that he wrote um, on this issue. And, and his suggestion, which I thought was, you know, Germain and very reasonable was um, the Nigeria to, for, to looking to set up some a body different not assembly to his, his present crisis and he suggested a constituency or a constitutional convention when we speak about specifically sovereign national conference it gets people out of thought a lot of people tend to misunderstand you know uh, uh, so, you know, the consequences or lead harshly consequences of what a sovereign national conference would And this is why had a majority of uh, this constituency or constitutional convention whereby Nigerians can to sit down and um, to comprehend, review the constitution and to look into we want to proceed as a nation. At the end of the day, it's important for sit down to, to these things because it is abundantly to anybody who is, you know, reasonable mind to cannot really move on health in a healthy as a nation in this manner. So, Ogaga, um, that, that now we, we see uh, the, the situation in the north, the situation kidnapping in the south, and this declaration of, of autonomy. Why now? Why is it happening when you have a Niger Delta uh, person as the president of the country? Oh, no, I, I don't even see this as having anything to do with the current president of Nigeria. Don't forget that a mere six years after our independence, there was a war. That was a civil war that was fought for three years. And don't forget that even before we got there, you know, the very leaders of the North during the period of constitutional debates as to whether we should be independent in 1957 or as soon as practicable as the North proposed, the famous statement that the mistake of 1914 has come to light was made by the Sadhana. So the question of the existence of Nigeria as one national entity has been contested right from the beginning. Nobody has actually really believed in this fabricated entity called Nigeria. And that is because it came to be, it came to be as in a reactionary way, re by reaction to colonialism. So the, the question was, let's first get rid of the, of the British. The same way the old adage says, you know, chase first, chase, first chase away the fox before you chastise the chicken for straying too far into the forest, right? So let's first get away, get rid of the British. Then we will decide on how we're going to govern ourselves. But that was a false assumption of unity. There was really no unity. We really, we needed to renegotiate Nigeria as soon as the British left. But that didn't happen. And then when the civil war, when the skirmishes, the pogroms in the north, all the things that led to the civil war began, that was the best opportunity for us to do that. And the Aburi, the Aburi, uh, uh, the Aburi conference in, in Ghana was part of that effort to avert what we are seeing now, the coming collapse of the colonial edifice called Nigeria. Again, that opportunity was squandered. And now we can keep going on and on and on, the series of coups and counter coups down to what I referred to a, a little while earlier. That is the 12 Northern states insisting on Sharia against the clear provision for a secular state in the constitution. So when you have that situation, and then the South is saying, well, we feel oppressed. And the Niger Delta is 
up in arms, say you're using our resources to develop the rest of the country with nothing coming back to us. What is the basis of unity? There is none. So we now have to renegotiate Nigeria on terms that will be acceptable to all the constituent parts. And that to me has nothing to do with Jonathan. That has been there right from the beginning. So it is just a mere coincidence. And in fact, if you ask me, it is striking that now that we have a Southern uh, president and one for the Niger Delta for that matter, Bayelsa, which is his own, which is his own state, should be the first to assert, you know, we're not the first because they've done this to the Ogini Bill of Rights, you know, but to reassert, you know, that question of self-determination. I think it's fine. It's, it's nothing to be worried about. It's something to be welcomed. And I think the rest of the nation should see this as a wake-up call for us to get it right now or forget about it. Um, Hanuta, uh, the, the, the listening to someone like Doyin Nokube, who is speaking for the government, um, the government is looking for ideas. I can't hear you. Can you... Okay, sorry. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I okay. So I said the government is looking for ideas, obviously. And what will you suggest in this situation now for the president to do? How do you think the president should handle this? Well, I don't know whether answer that question. I mean, I think that I'm not sure that uh, President uh, Goodluck has the ability to handle such. Um, there are various questions about how in oh, this president is. Some really poor decision making that he's been doing um, uh, every, is uh, from every institution. It is highly unlikely that Duncan has the ability to provide this vision that uh, we're all looking for. But I mean, if you were to ask me, I had suggested that the you know we need to uh, look to the idea of setting a constituent assembly or a constitutional convention whereby we discuss these issues. I think it is very important. I don't think it is fair to the country, to Nigeria, to continue in you know, the the level of dichotomy and the hate that is on ground is so and it really is. I mean I it's heartbreaking for people because I'm one of them who actually believe in the country. I I I believe in Nigeria I don't see the um the diversity uh, as a, you know, I don't see it as a, as, I see it as a virtue. And it's very important that, you know, um, people see it like that. And one of the biggest, biggest problems we have is that those individuals that are responsible for bringing down the country are not be taking responsibility. The populace, because of the bigoted way of thinking that we have, you know, we're not, um, those responsibilities, the responsibility. You see those that power have been individuals. Yes, they do have these, they do come from geographic because they do practice certain religions, but those are individuals who have failed in their meet their responsibility to their communities and as a whole. The individuals that take directly in from Nigeria and the corruption should take responsibility for their actions and the else that is associated with them. When we analyze and apportion, uh, you know, uh, you know, the identity of an individual looted for himself and for his family, his people and his victims, you know, what we do, we, we wrong to designate, you know, different identities are the sins of those people. And what pays me more than any respect is that we exonerate because every single time we have a, and you know, you hear it all the time. You know, I, I mean, I'm from, I'm from the core north, and when I go there, all they speak about, oh, Jonathan this and Jonathan that. And I always remind them, I said, but Jonathan, or my Edward, is he's from Kassan State, any better than, than, you know, you have to give a uh, fault where it is due. And failing to do that, what we do is um, shield these individuals. We shield them. I think even if she breaks up and gets, we deal with that issue, unless we come to that particular issue, by giving individuals who are responsible, you know, making them part responsible, making their tribe or responsible, and let's do that. Even if the nation up, because of their thinking of Nigerians, everybody is corrupt, everybody wants to loot, 
people in government is to make God to go to a minister who wants to take part the person in the cab uh, who would want us more money from you. Person, your house to, you know, steal money from Unless we read this issue within ourselves, you know, citizens as individuals, even if the country breaks the same um, element, the same element that has brought will bring down all the components. You know what I mean? So this is an issue we really have to get in, in, in touch within ourselves as individuals. All right, let, let's, um, we'll, we'll stop it there. And, um, Ogaga, one, one last thing, uh, you know. So what do you expect to see? Briefly, we have like a second left. What do you expect to see in the next, in the next 30 days? Uh, any, any kind of reaction from the federal government? From the federal government, nothing. You know, it has proven itself to be totally inept and uh, visionless and doesn't care. You know, the house is, is fiddling why the roof is burning, you know, uh, when Nigeria is burning. But from the people, I expect to see more of this. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the day after, but I expect to see more of the people asserting their independence and forcing, wanting to force the issue of renegotiating Nigeria. And that is a good thing. All right, so that's it. Uh, we will come back in about five or three minutes.